What's cracking guys? Roger back with another video. So holiday time is here. We just had Thanksgiving. Uh, today is Black Friday. Hopefully you guys got some cool gadgets uh, in Black Friday deals. Uh, Christmas is around the corner. And you know what else is around the corner? Reinvent. Yep, Reinvent 2019 uh, going to take place in Las Vegas from this coming Monday uh, till the next Friday. Like last year, I'll be there as well. Um, so expect a lot of videos uh, on the new updates, announcements, and all that good stuff. I'm really interested to see what, what announcements comes out, uh, especially in the serverless area. Okay, so now that's out of the way. Uh, let's talk a recent change that happened uh, to the Lambda console. Um, so the Lambda console got changed like this week and a new feature got added for asynchronous invocation. Uh, so let's jump into that, go over the blog post uh, and then do a hands-on demo. All right, let's get into it. Okay, I'm in the Lambda console. Uh, if I select a, a Lambda function and maybe calculate prime, why wouldn't you be calculating prime, huh? All right, so on this right side, right, uh, before you used to see all the icons of the services that this Lambda role has access to. But that part is gone now. So uh, it's not gone, gone, uh, but that part is replaced by this add destination um, button. And all the role related information has gone to this permissions tab. So if I go to this permissions tab, uh, you could see uh, all the services that this Lambda role has access to. Uh, so if we want to test it out, uh, so remember this, this role has a lot of uh, permissions. Uh, so if I go back to configuration, and then let's go change the role. Um, maybe give it the basic execution, which doesn't have all the bells and whistles. Uh, click save. Okay, now go up and go back to uh, permissions tab, and you can see this role only has CloudWatch logs. Uh, but anyway, going back to the configuration tab, uh, so we have the shiny new add destination button. Uh, so let's take a look at what it does. So this is the blog post uh, that came out literally a couple days back this week. Uh, so hot off the press, and I really like uh, this blog post because uh, it goes through the actual architecture diagrams and also uh, it gives like a functioning code. Uh, so if you wanna test it out, you can literally copy paste, follow these steps, and then uh, you can do it. So it's a full self-contained uh, blog. Uh, but anyway, let's go back. Uh, let's try to understand what is the problem it's trying to solve. Uh, so when a function is invoked asynchronously, Lambda sends the event to an internal queue. Uh, so this internal queue is basically the queue uh, for the lambdas to be executed. And then a separate process uh, reads the queue and executes a lambda function. Um, however, uh, the return code you get is from the process that writes it to the queue. So if your lambda function is in the queue uh, to get executed asynchronously, you get a successful return code. However, uh, there is no additional information. So maybe your Lambda tried to uh, execute asynchronously, it failed, or maybe it passed. You have no idea. Uh, and let's say uh, architecturally, um, if after your Lambda gets processed asynchronously, uh, you want to trigger some more stuff. Maybe you want to trigger another Lambda, you want to trigger SNS or SQS or something. So the only way to do that was from the Lambda code itself. So you'll write the Lambda code, which will get invoked asynchronously. And in the Lambda code itself, you will put, hey, if this process is successful, fire SQS or fire another Lambda, right? Um, so it is kind of, kind of an overhead. So with this change, what it does is, it allows you to uh, execute other processes after the asynchronous invocation. So you could say, uh, the Lambda, which I am invoking asynchronously, uh, if the Lambda runs fine, then maybe uh, call another Lambda and pass this input, right? And if it fails, uh, maybe pass another message to maybe SMS, SQS, or even Bridge, right? So you can create a whole workflow uh, without 
worrying about that lambda 15 minute runtime uh, because uh, when you call another lambda from your lambda or you call SQS, SNS, whatever you do, it's eating up that 15 minute runtime. Uh, but with this, uh, not only uh, it gives you a visibility of whether your lambda ran successfully or it failed, uh, it also kind of gives you a way to chain multiple events and create a workflow. So another thing that's changed in the console related to this is this section. Uh, so if you guys worked with dead letter queue for asynchronous invocation, um, so dead letter queue is basically if your Lambda failed to execute uh, for asynchronous invocation, uh, it would reply twice, right? Uh, so there used to be a check mark for DLQ, but now they made it a little bit simpler. You can see it says asynchronous invocation, uh, age of event and retry attempt uh, two. So with destination, you could use both together. Uh, so for dead letter queue, it will retry twice. It will also send an event uh, to the destinations uh, for failed, failed uh, execution. Okay, let's do a demo. Uh, so I copied this code from the blog post. I'll give the link uh, of the blog post uh, in the description. So it's pretty straightforward. If you pass uh, like success, uh, then it sends callback null and then it, it ends successfully. If you pass failure uh, <laughs> to the input, uh, it did, does this callback with the error. Um, so I pasted this in this Lambda call event destinations. However, I changed a little bit. Um, so for success, uh, instead of passing just null and no message, I just put a, a message here, right? Uh, so this is to simulate like, uh, if something is successful and you want to trigger maybe a Lambda or SNS or something, uh, you are passing a different input, right? So that the next process uh, can take that input and go ahead and start processing. And for failure, we already have that. So now uh, let's add destinations. Um, so before I did this, I actually created a SNS topic. Uh, this is the ARN, I I'm gonna copy this ARN. I subscribe one of my emails uh, to this topic as well. Um, so let's go back to the Lambda event console, click add destination. Uh, so you can see source is asynchronous or stream. Uh, so stream is basically kinesis. Um, so I select asynchronous and then let's do on success. And you can see, you can put SQS, SNS, Lambda, event bridge, bunch of different stuff. So I'm just gonna paste this SNS topic, okay? Click save. Okay, so now uh, this is all set. And similarly, you can add a destination for failure. You can put a Lambda and stuff, but let's just do it success for now. So the command to invoke the function is also given in the blog post. So I'm gonna copy this, uh, go to my trusty uh, Cloud9 AWS CLI, and then just paste this. Uh, so uh, if you see this, it's invoking the Lambda function. This is the name that I gave. Uh, invocation type event and payload I'm passing uh, success true. So if I press enter, okay, so now I should uh, get an email. Okay, so this is the email. So you could see it gets the request payload uh, that passed to the original Lambda. Uh, it also give you the payload uh, that baby Yoda rocks, right? So uh, in, in actual scenario, you could pass something else and then uh, you could fire another Lambda from this SNS, or ideally you could just trigger the Lambda directly from the destination, and then that Lambda can process something else. Okay, so hopefully this explains the new uh, destination feature. Give it a try and let me know what you guys think. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like this video, please smash that like button and click subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace.